going to speak about um, Frankenstein or Modern Prometheus, written by Mary Shelley in 1818. Um, so Frankenstein is a gothic uh, uh, novel, or where is known as it, 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 as a pessimist gothic uh, romanticism. Uh, Mary Shelley was herself a uh, second generation romantic author. So last time we've been speaking about uh, about realist novels. Now we're going to speak about romantic novels. I know that the order is somehow confusing because in class we started with uh, the age of reason. We haven't seen any of the texts. We spoke about them. We have spoken of the novel, The Life and Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. And then we started the method of literary analysis. And then we moved to romanticism. And we've uh, spoken about the uh, poetry. We have discussed uh, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud, The Daffodils by William Wordsworth. And we discussed but we have spoken about a general overview or the general plot of Frankenstein or modern Prometheus. But that is all we could do in class because of the limited timing we had. So today, well, uh, now um, in the online lectures, I am going back on the same themes, but in more detail. So well, I didn't uh, go back to the age of reason and rationalism because we have dealt with that. Uh, uh, last year, so most of you have already attended my online classes about uh, the Age of Reason and the Enlightenment, and it was well explained in class. So we have discussed the method of literary analysis in videos, and then we started Robinson Crusoe, and um, and um, uh, sorry, no, we 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 started first with re uh, romanticism and romantic poetry, and I went directly to romanticism and romantic poetry because we started them. Uh, in class. And because in class they were very brief, I didn't want you to lose them. I didn't want you to forget them. That's why I started my online classes from Romanticism and Romantic uh, Poetry. So I went back later to, uh, to, uh, to prose writing. I provided you with the entire uh, method of literary analysis. We have dealt uh, with uh, Robinson Crusoe as an example of realist uh, literature, but you should know that Robinson Crusoe uh, is uh, or uh, is included within the uh, the uh, realism and rise of the novel. Okay, so in literature, in this program, you have the uh, uh, the uh, units. So the first unit is uh, the rise of the novel and the age of reason, within which we have discussed the life and adventures of Robinson Crusoe and uh, Clarissa or History of a Young Lady, and then Romanticism. In Romanticism, we have discussed uh, some uh, romantic poetry, Mary William Woodsworth, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud, uh, Percy Shelley's um, uh, Love's Philosophy. Uh, we've talked about Lord Byron's uh, When We Two Parted, and uh, William Blake's The Chimney Sweeper. And then uh, we're going to speak about uh, Frankenstein or modern Prometheus to end up this uh, syllabus. All right. So Mary Shelley was a second generation romantic poet. Uh, she was the wife of Percy B. Shelley. Uh, she had a sort of a difficult life uh, in, uh, in the beginning. She was a teenager when she married um, uh, Percy Shelley. Actually, they escaped together. Uh, he was. Uh, they met when he he visit when he was visiting her father uh, to learn uh, philosophy. Her father was a a, uh, a politician and philosopher, and uh, his name is William Godwin, and he is very famous. Her mother is the 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 first uh, rem, uh, the first feminist in uh, in the European world. She was the first woman to speak about feminism. She is referred to as the mother of feminism. Her name is Mary Wollstonecraft. Actually, uh, Mary Shelley herself has the name of her both her mother and her brother. Her real name is Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. Okay. So Mary uh, Wollstonecraft is her mother. She is the first uh, woman to speak about feminism. She wrote the Vindication of the Rights of Women, in which she speaks about the rights of women or the basic rights of women, which were 
education uh, to be considered as a full human being, uh, to have equal um, equal um, 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 consideration and rights as men and so on. Okay, because in the 18th uh, century, uh, women's lives were were um, somehow difficult. They didn't have enough consideration or the consideration they uh, deserved. Okay. So you see that Mary Shelley grew up in a very intellectual environment, and both her parents were authors. Both of them were very intellectual, and uh, she was the wife of a very uh, artistic and very creative uh, author. So it was very um, common for her and ordinary to be a, an artist and to, to express herself as she did. When she wrote Frankenstein, she was in a uh, vacancy house in uh, in uh, uh, on a holiday in Switzerland with her husband uh, Percy Shelley and uh, Lord Byron. The three of them being second generation uh, uh, romantic. Okay, so they're. Use themselves, so they started writing uh, scary stories or stories that were uh, gothic, that that were uh, disgusting, or else. And thus, uh, they came. They come up, or rather, uh, when she was struggling with the writing, uh, both Lord Byron and her husband Shelley were. Uh, were doing well with the writing. They managed to write uh, uh, gothic stories, but she was unable to write something gothic. She was unable to write something truly subversive and and uh, strong until she gathered all her uh, imagination and uh, finally managed to write uh, Frankenstein. So when she wrote about Frankenstein, uh, it was uh, in the beginning a short story. And then it was so subversive and so strong, it is said that Lord Byron uh, couldn't stay in the same room as her because he was scared of the story. And uh, uh, she was encouraged by Percy Shelley into uh, publishing the, uh, into uh, elaborating the story into a novel and into publishing uh, the work. This is why a lot of people suspected this work to be, uh, in fact, written by Percy Shelley rather than by, by Mary Shelley. Okay, that is uh, for a long time. Uh, in the beginning, people attacked her and thought that it was written by Percy because he was uh, more famous than her. And even um, until this very day, there are a lot of people who still think that the novel was actually written by him rather than by her. Now, that is not something that we can uh, confirm. Um, now I want you to tell me about uh, the novel. We're going to speak about Gothicism and we're going to define Gothicism, but we will do that later. Now I want you to give me the overview of the novel. What do you know about the, uh, the novel? Method. Yes. Um, Frankenstein is a, a gothic science fiction novel that tells the story of a scientist, Victor Frankenstein, who tries to reanimate a body using electricity. However, he ends up creating mm -hmm. a mosque despised by people because of his uh, unnatural appearance. Eventually, the master vows revenge on the on Doctor Frankenstein for bring him for bringing him to life, only to be mistreated by humans. He goes and kills Victor's best friend Clerval and his brother William, and also his wife Elizabeth. The scientist and his creation for, face each other, and the novel ends with Victor's death and the monster choosing to die away on an ice raft in the Arctic Sea. Okay, thank you, Rahma. Someone else to provide the overview of uh, the uh, the novel, Mary, the plot development. Someone to speak about the plot of the novel, the entire plot of the novel and not that of the excerpt. Anyone? Uh, yes, miss. Yes, uh, Ahmed. One, 
Yeah, uh, when the beast uh, was accepted uh, by uh, the people and even uh, Frankenstein, uh, uh, which uh, wanted uh, from Frankenstein to to create uh, an, another another uh, beast, uh, another creature, uh, yeah, uh, another creature, uh, uh, imitated uh, him. Uh, imitated it, uh, but uh, Frankenstein uh, didn't uh, agree, and uh, the beast uh, sta uh, started to think to, to take re uh, revenge uh, from uh, the the friends, uh, Frankenstein friends, and uh, and his uh, mistress, his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, uh, and uh, the the beast uh, did, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he killed uh, his uh, his wife, and uh, Frankenstein uh, go to to fight uh, the beast uh, uh, far far away in uh, an ice island, I think, and uh, where mm -hmm. in uh, the Arctic, yeah. Yeah, he followed well, him to the Arctic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, after that, uh, the beast uh, uh, could uh, flee, and uh, Frankenstein uh, still there. Uh, where he is uh, a captain uh, of a trip, uh, help uh, Frankenstein, help Frankenstein, and uh, get him. Uh, with them in, in that trip, and Frankenstein uh, started to, uh, to, uh, to tell them uh, all the story. And the captain, uh, okay. after that, uh, told uh, mm -hmm. the family of uh, Frankenstein that Frankenstein died, and uh, when the, uh, the beast uh, uh, now, uh, knew, knew, knew that, uh, uh decided to to, to kill himself uh, no he didn't decide to kill himself but he died he died of agony actually uh, thank you very much yeah. ahmed for the yeah. overview yes do you have something to add yes please. yes first of all yes must be Hasdin, yes first of all we must be aware of the term modern prometheus Prometheus, like you said, is God who gave the fire to human in order to warm themselves. But he didn't aware that we can use it to manufacturing weapons, etc. Like Dr. Frankenstein, he made a beast by uh, animating it by, by electricity. He tried to define the nature, the general law of nature, and he created this Creator is a hideous creature, and he tried to seek his vengeance by killing his wife mm -hmm. and his brother with it. Well, so. Right. Thank you. Um, there, there, there is something I have to mention about uh, considering the novel. Um, one of you said in the beginning, a gothic science fiction novel. Actually, uh, we do not uh, refer to the novel both as gothic and science fiction. Uh, you can uh, refer to it either as gothic or science fiction, but I don't truly like to refer to it uh, using them both because um, in the beginning, when the novel was written, there was no such thing as science fiction. Um, the author did not intend to write science fiction. Uh, she, the term science fiction didn't exist back then. And uh, there have been some fantasies about science, but there were very few 
uh, novels or very few literature, very small literature about uh, about science back then. So well, and today we're seeing the novel from the romantic point of view. We are not seeing it from a science fiction point of view, which are different, two different, uh, two totally different um, uh, points of view or perspectives. Okay. So you will either refer to it as science fiction or for, uh, as gothic, but today or in this syllabus, in your syllabus, we are approaching the novel from a gothic uh, perspective, not from a science fiction perspective. OK, so as I said, uh, science fiction as a term appeared in the 1920s when the Gernsberg brothers uh, um, started a magazine of uh, science stories in which they were calling people to write stories about science and all these stories were about the future because they expected the future to be more technological and more developed thanks to science. Uh, so they came up with the concept scientific fiction which later became science fiction. Okay. But for the moment, for the present time, we are going to see this from a Gothic perspective. One thing you should know about literature and about criticism in general, what we are doing here is just your first, very first step into literary analysis and criticism. Something that you are going to learn through time is that the same novel or the same literary text can have different interpretations if it is seen from different perspectives. OK, and this is the case of Frankenstein if we see it from science fiction perspective or from a romantic perspective. The analysis is going to be different. Uh, the interpretation is also going to be different. All right. Now, um, to get back to uh, the title of the novel, and I hope that you are taking note because I'm not going to write too much today uh, because we need to uh, to finish this. Uh, in the uh, within now 90 minutes. Um, so I hope that you will be taking notes. If there are things that you are missing, try to watch the video later. You are going to find it either here or on YouTube in order to uh, to recheck the notes and take them again. OK, so uh, to speak about the title of the novel, um, like has been mentioned, it's related to uh, the figure of Prometheus. And actually, there is in literature what we call the Promethean hero. OK, I'm going to write this just to show you what I'm talking about. OK, there is in literature what we call the Promethean hero or the romantic hero. All right. Promethean hero comes from Prometheus and just as uh, uh, just like uh, um, uh, as Adin said, um, the uh, the Prometheus uh, Promethean hero uh, is inspired from well, from Prometheus or from the myth of Prometheus. Now Prometheus was a Titan. He was a god uh, who loved human beings. He offered them fire. As a consequence, he was punished by his brother Zeus, who. Uh, who uh, who pinned him on a rock and who uh, put a raven or a bird to eat from his liver. And whenever uh, the uh, liver ended, it was born again. It grew again and the bird would be eaten from his liver constantly. And thus Prometheus will live in a constant pain and suffering because of human beings. Now, one more thing we know about him is that he is a god. Thus, he never dies. He is eternal. The pain is eternal, and thus the suffering is eternal. Prometheus is the eternal. Uh, is, is that is that who is living in eternal pain? Okay, Prometheus, uh, and the Promethean hero is that who is living in eternal pain and suffering because of human beings. Okay. He is living in eternal pain and suffering because of human beings. He offered fire to human beings. He loved human beings, and thus he was punished for that. Uh, as a, uh, or likewise, uh, uh, Victor Frankenstein is also referred to as a uh, modern Prometheus for the same reason. Victor Frankenstein gave life to the uh, to uh, the beast or to a monster while trying to make a human being. He thought that he was going to make uh, to give life to a beautiful human being, but instead he made an awful uh, beast or a monster. Thus, 
he lived in total regret, in agony, and in anxiety for a long time. He suffered throughout the entire novel as he was uh, killing his, uh, sorry, as he was losing his family members, his bro his uh, best friend, his wife, because of his creation. So he was falling into agony more and more uh, each day, and uh, it brought his end. He died from pneumonia at the end, but uh, it, it all happened because he was uh, he was uh, in the uh, icy uh, Arctic, where he was um, uh, hiding from the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the beast. Okay, so he was living in total agony and in anxiety until he died. He is a man who lived in total pain and suffering for human beings. Okay, this is why there is a comparison between uh, Victor Frankenstein and Prometheus. Um, this also leads to uh, the uh, genre, which is uh, goticism. Okay. Gothicism or Gothic literature. Now, the word Gothic or Gothic literature or Gothicism comes from Goth, and the Goths are a, a medieval tribe who lived in Eastern Europe and who had a very uh, particular lifestyle and a very particular dressing style and so on. So, whenever someone is imitating the Goths, they are referred to as the Gothic. Uh, uh, because they are a medieval uh, tribe, their fashion is medieval. If the fashion is medieval, it means it is ancient and archaic. Okay? They are very ancient and very archaic. So the first thing you are going to find in something that is Gothic is that it is very ancient and very archaic. And remember that one of the basic uh, aspects of romanticism is that uh, they have this uh, nostalgia for the past or they have this nostalgia for uh, uh, for everything that happened in the past. Remember that? So the uh, uh, the uh, the return to the ancient and the archaic uh, in Gothicism is related to uh, the romantic aspect or the romantic principles um, uh, in the movement. Okay. So we have here the return to the ancient and the archaic. All right. One more thing we also know about Victor is that he lived in total agony and anxiety for a long time until he died. As we said, he is the Promethean hero. So the fact that we're speaking of anxiety and agony, we're also speaking of one of the basic aspects of Gothicism here. Okay, so notice that uh, you can extract the basic aspects of a literary movement from the literary text. Okay, you can take any literary text and extract the aspects of the movement from it. So the aspects of Gothicism that we know so far are the return to the ancient and the archaic and uh, anxiety and agony. What else do we know about the beast? What else do we know about Frankenstein, the, the novel? OK, we're going to find all these aspects of Gothicism as we start the analysis. That is, as we really move on with the analysis, you will be exposed to uh, each of these and you will be uh, able to, uh, to, to speak about them or to extract them on your own and speak about them. OK. Sorry, I have been interrupted by a few messages. So, can anyone identify the passage? Hello, you can activate your microphones and speak. Uh, yes, miss. Uh, the, yes. the excerpt, uh, the excerpt, uh, chapter five, uh, pages uh, 55, 56, uh, taken from the Gothic romantic uh, novel uh, Frankenstein or Modern Prometheus, uh, which is written by Mary Shelley. Uh, Shelley. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It speaks, uh, yeah. It speaks about uh, uh, scientists. Uh, was uh, Victor Frankenstein, 
uh, he, he he wanted to to create uh, uh, from uh, a dead body uh, a, a creature imitate uh, his mother, but uh, actually mm -hmm. uh, the result uh, it uh, it was a uh, uh, shapeless uh, beast. Uh, which uh, turned uh, Frankenstein's life uh, uh, such a hell. Well, I thank you. Um, actually, you know, Ahmed, you cannot say hell in uh, in an academic field or in the academic analysis. So try to find a more suitable word. Okay, try to use. Uh, it's not a formal word that you can use in the analysis. Um, I, I, I didn't mention when I was speaking about the return to the ancient and the archaic, I didn't tell you why I was uh, I mentioned that. Actually, I mentioned or I referred to the return of the ancient and the archaic first because uh, the goats were a medieval tribe. So when, and whenever, whenever someone is imitating them, they are imitating something very ancient and medieval. But also that because in the novel Frankenstein, uh, Victor actually um, believes in a very old uh, theory, and that's what he used in uh, for his uh, experiment. That he was a medical student who wanted to give life to an inanimate body. Uh, he was obsessed by the idea of his mother. He, he was uh, obsessed with the love of his mother. He lost his mother, and thus uh, he doesn't say it clearly in the novel, but you can understand it. Okay, that is, even though he's not, he doesn't say that he wanted to give life, uh, to give back life to his mother directly, but you feel it. You feel like that is uh, one of his. Uh, uh, one of his intentions, okay, one of his motivations. All right, so in the novel Frankenstein, the uh, past or the, uh, yeah, the past is uh, represented in many details, in different details, sometimes in a direct way, sometimes in an indirect way. For example, the fact that Victor, sorry, the fact that Victor uh, chose the theory of Galvanism. All right. The fact that Victor chose the theory of Galvanism. Now, Galvanism was known as a theory or was considered as an obsolete theory. It was considered as a very ancient theory. And uh, it was uh, he was told by all his teachers that Galvanism was uh, was uh, was obsolete, that the books that he was reading were obsolete and they were proven right because they were very ancient, very old. Yet he believed in them and he followed these theories even though uh, his teachers warned him against them. Okay, and this is why the scientific mistake happened. All right, so as a consequence, uh, because he followed very ancient, a very ancient theory, he ended up giving life to uh, a monster instead of a normal human being. OK, uh, one more remark. When you are introducing or identifying the text, please use correct and complete sentences. This text is extracted from or this text is taken from the Gothic romantic novel entitled uh, Frankenstein or Modern Prometheus. OK, this is how you identify the passage. Um, focus on the uh, on how you start your sentence because it's very important. Um, you do not start your sentence by speaking about the chapter. It's either the novel. You first introduce the novel and then you introduce the chapter. So a uh, correct or a complete identification of the passage would be this passage, this excerpt or else uh, is uh, taken from uh, the Gothic romantic novel uh, um, Mary Shelley, uh, sorry, the Gothic romantic novel Frankenstein or Modern Prometheus written in 1818 by Mary Shelley, chapter 5, pages 55-56. Um, the novel can also be referred to as epistolary, okay? The novel can also be referred to as epistolary and that's because it's written in the form of letters, okay? So let me write this down. The novel can also be referred to as epistolary because it was written in form of letters. In the beginning of the novel, 
it is not told by Victor himself. It is told by Robert Walton. And Robert Walton was the man who found Victor in, uh, in the ocean, in the sea. And he saved him. And he spoke of Victor in a letter. Okay? So the entire novel came in form of letters that uh, Robert Walton was writing to his sister. This is why it is an epistolary Gothic romantic novel. All right? Now, if you have any problems or any questions, please stop me because I cannot see your faces, so I wouldn't know that you have a problem unless if you stop me. Okay? Now, if you have no problems, I can start talking about the uh, general ideas. Can I? Yes, I can, I can begin. Yes, Miss. So I'm starting. Yes. Any problem? No. No, Miss. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I'm, start, I'm going to start reading the first paragraph. It was an on a dreary night of November that I beheld the accomplishments of my toys. With an anxiety that almost amounted to agony, I collected the instruments of life around me, that I might infuse a spark of being into the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. It was already one in the morning, the rain pattered dismally against the panes, and my candle was nearly uh, burnt out when, by the glimmer of the half-extinguished light, I saw the dull yellow eye of the creature open. It breathed hard, and a convulsive motion agitated its limbs. Now, um, can, you give me your, uh, can you give me your idea about this first paragraph before we start the analysis? Can you? Anyone? About what, Miss? The first paragraph. I want your views about the first paragraph, what you think, what you think it speaks about. Can you explain it? It's, uh, it's uh, speaks about the, the, the hero uh, uh, atmosphere which uh, uh, collapsed uh, the moment uh, when the science uh, was creating the the, the beast. Mm, I'm not sure about that, but you were basically saying that it uh, it talks about the moment in which the beast woke up. Yeah, I want you to look at the setting. What do you think of the settings? Think about the setting. I want you to comment on the setting, both time and place. Hello. Miss. Yes. Uh, the setting took place in Victor hometown. I want you to comment on the setting in the paragraph. Can you please look at the paragraph and say what you think of the settings? Both time and place. What do you think of them? Are they merry and happy? It's sunny and a beautiful day. Is he, you know? This is how you comment on the, uh, the settings. What do you think of the settings? Uh. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ahmed. Yeah, uh, it was uh, cold and uh, windy because uh, uh, it was uh, it was uh, November, so uh, it was cold and uh, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, a bit uh, dark, uh, a little bit dark. Like nine. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was dark. Uh huh. 
Yusuf, I see that Yusuf Sadiq is also here. Can you tell us what you think about the settings? I'm scrolling over the list no. and seeing who is here. Iman, Iman Wolf. What do you mean by no? You have nothing to say about the setting? It's beautiful. Uh, I, no, the, the, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. The, the, the settings are uh, grim, gothic, gothic. They're like uh, typical like settings for like gothic novels, I think. Yeah. Uh huh. Because he he uses like yes, words like yes. agony, uh, like dreary night. He's like describing like mm -hmm. uh, his uh, what he what he was feeling the moment uh, he was about to create the monster Frankenstein. He's like mm -hmm. his monster, and. Uh, it's yeah, it's gothic, dark and uh, grim. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, uh, that's more or less why I want to use you to say about the settings. OK, the setting is very important here and it's deeply related to the atmosphere. That is, if you are able to speak about the time and place settings, you will be actually uh, answering the question about the atmosphere. Remember that the atmosphere is how things feel around you. OK? So the settings here, is, especially in this text, they are highly related to the atmosphere and what you think you're going to think about the atmosphere. So think about this. It was an, on a dreary night of November. OK, so now that the, the night was was uh, it was dreary night. It was a a uh, the, a, 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 a gothic or a dark night. OK, uh, that I beheld the accomplishments of my toil with an anxiety that almost uh, 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 amounted to agony. So how does the character feel? He he's not happy. He is not ambitious. He is not excited about his work. He is anxious about his work. He is anxious about knowing uh, what what he did or about the result of his experiment because he spent so much time working on it. Okay, that I collected the instruments of life around me that might that I might infuse a spark of being into the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. I want you to think about this expression here that infuse a spark of being, a spark of being that is a spark of life, giving life to uh, the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. Can you uh, can you can you comment on this expression? What do you think of it? Hello. Yes. Uh, I think that the word spark uh, kind of refers to electricity since he, he used electricity to reanimate the body. Mm hmm. Yes. He tried to make it uh, to give him life by uh, using the electricity. Let's say. Mm hmm. Yes, well, actually, that's the literal meaning. So you just uh, raised my uh, attention to the fact that there is a pun here. So that's the literal meaning, but there is also another meaning in sparking uh, life into the inanimate body. That's what is the other meaning? The other meaning. Uh, I think. Yes, you see. I think what he meant is like because like he he used a corpse. Though. To try to re reanimate his Sorry? mother, he he used the uh, corpse. He was using a corpse to try to reanimate his mother, to bring her to life. Uh, actually, he used he used different pieces of different uh, 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 bodies. Okay, he used oh. different pieces of different body organs, and he put them all together to to make one human being. So these body organs belong to different human beings. Or two oh. different dead humans. Uh, so mm -hmm. they were de so they were dead because they were lifeless before, like he like executed the experiment. And, yes, uh, the the body was uh, lifeless because he collected. See, mm. uh, where's uh, we're going to see this later uh, in the in the text. He explains that he collected. Uh, no, it's still here. I collected the instruments of life around me. Okay, see here, 
I collected the instruments of life around me. He collected different parts of human beings, different uh, body organs, and brought them together to to uh, uh, to uh, to make a, a human body. Okay, and he made it on purpose to choose. Uh, the features of these human beings. So he didn't take just any organs he found. He chose the organs and he used only the most beautiful ones. Now, infuse a spark of being. That can be considered as a pun because the first meaning, as, your, uh, as Ahma said, uh, he uses the word spark because he gave life to the body using electricity. That's right, but it also means that he gave uh, a life. That is, it's it's an, a metaphorical way of saying he gave life to the body. But I wanted to focus on the choice of the word. He could have said, "I give uh, give life to the body." What? Why does he say infuse a spark of being? Well, what do you think of the choice of words here? Because even Victor himself cannot think of his creation as a person. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't any one of you think that the word, the fact of saying infuse a spark of being is an excited way of thinking, of speaking? Uh, it reveals his excitement, it reveals his ambition, it reveals uh, his uh, his emotion about the body. He is not senseless or he is not indifferent to his experiment. He wants to infuse uh, life into the body, so he's excited about it. Okay, This is what I wanted you to look at. Now, there is another figure of speech within the same sentence. Can you spot it? Infuse a spark of being into the, li the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. Come on, wake up, people. Hello, there's a lot of silence in this uh, class, don't you think? Personification. Personification, where? When he say, infuse a spark of being into lifeless thing that lay at my feet. Okay, why do you think it's a personification? You give a human quality to Well, when you say it's a personification, you mean that he is comparing the dead body to a human being, but actually he did truly give life to a dead body. So it's not uh, really a personification because the personification is only metaphorical and uh, is never literal. But in this case, he truly gave life to this uh, to the dead body. He truly made it alive, made it uh, a, a, a living body. Come on, people, think about it. There's another figure of speech there. I'm sure that my first year students are going to find it. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, paradox yes. when. Uh, uh huh. Uh, when he says. Uh, uh, Infuse a spark of being into the, the lifeless thing. Uh, Very good, uh, uh, Ahmed. Yes, it's a it's an analogy and not a paradox. Um, Thank you very much. Well, it's very easy. It's there. Infuse a spark of being that is giving life into the lifeless thing, to something lifeless. This is an analogy. He is putting together two, uh, uh, two opposing situations. The first one is the one in which he is speaking about giving life. Second one in which he is speaking about something not living, lifeless. Okay, so this is here an analogy. All right, let's move on. So I might infuse a spark of being into the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. It was already one in the morning. The rain pattered dismally against the panes and my candle was nearly burnt out. Nearly burnt out, so what, how do you expect the, uh, the, uh, the atmosphere to be around him? 
it's raining, it's, he's anxious, it is raining, the candle was almost burnt out, so how much light does he have? Dark, dark atmosphere. Yes, it's very dark, okay? When by the glimmer of the half-extinguished light, I saw the dull yellow eye of the creature open. It breathed hard, a convulsive motion agitated his limbs. All right, for the first paragraph, what do you think are the components of Gothicism that are in this uh, paragraph? What are the components of Gothicism, of the Gothic text that you think uh, you can extract from this paragraph? Horror, death, and fear. Fear, okay, did you say death? Can you repeat, please? I said death, fear, and... And? <laughs> Sorry, I heard death, fear, and, and then there was no more sound. Okay, I don't think there is death in this. Well, maybe there is some death. No, yeah, there is a lifeless body. So, yeah, probably there is death. Uh, so, we know that there is fear, there is darkness, and uh, there is, uh, see, there's already anxiety and agony. When he's speaking of himself, he is speaking of anxiety and agony, but there is also darkness. Okay? There's also darkness. Yeah. Even when he is speaking of the weather, he says it was a dreary night. Okay. Uh, he says uh, the rain was falling. Okay. So everything is done purposefully to show that this is a Gothic text. Uh, the author did it on purpose to show that this was a Gothic text. She, she could have uh, made a beautiful night. You know, accidents also happen on a beautiful night. It doesn't ha necessarily have to be a dreary night. But she made it on purpose to make everything gloomy and dark, okay? So it's all gloomy and dark. All right? Um, there is also, you said, you mentioned fear and death. Let's focus on death here. Uh, yes, that is a basic element of the Gothic text, particularly when we're speaking uh, of the, uh, not only death, but uh, the lifeless body. Uh, how do we usually refer to lifeless bodies, dead body? Uh, what do you think of a dead body? Hello? A dead body? What does it... Uh, what does it make you think about? How does it make you feel? How do you feel about it, that body? Honorable fear. Sorry? The fear. fear. Yes. What else? There is fear. Yes. What else? Inanimation. Sorry, can you repeat? Inanimation. In animation, I'm not sure I got it. I got you right. Can, can you please write this word in the conversation? All right, let's let aside the inanimate body or the uh, lifeless body. We will speak about it later or we're going to speak about the idea later. Let's move on with the reading. And please be more vivid. You are too sleepy. I don't usually analyze text this way with my students. Okay. When by the glimmer of the half extinguished uh, light, I saw the yellow eye of the creature open. All right. He goes on, how can I describe my emotions at this catastrophe or how delineate the wretch whom with such infinite pains and care I had endeavored to form? His limbs were in proportion and I had 
selected his features as beautiful. Beautiful, great God. His yellow skin scarcely covered the work of muscles and arteries beneath. His hair was of a lustrous black, his flowing. His teeth were of a purely by a whiteness, but these luxuriances only formed a more horrid contrast with his watery eyes that seemed almost of the same color as the dun white sockets in which they were in which they were set. His shriveled complexion and straight black lips. Okay. Now I want you to I want you to explain this, and uh, you will act and as if you were in the exam, and you can have that in the exam. Okay. Let's say one of your exam questions is to explain the meaning of this sentence. To whom? or how delineate the 